to another episode of Marksman Weekly. This week's episode is going to be episode one of my Marksman class setup, and for the purpose of these episodes, we're going to be setting up a class for the IA-2 Marksman Rifle. The reason I'm choosing to do the IA-2 Marksman Rifle is because it is the most well-rounded, and in my opinion, the best Marksman Rifle in the game, and if the mar Oh, sorry, if the IA-2 is not really your thing, if you would rather use the MK-14 or MR-28 or whatever the case may be, keep in mind that you will still be getting good information in these videos. A lot of the information is universal in the Marksman class. I'm just choosing to use the IA-2 as my model for this build. One thing that's somewhat important to remember when looking at attachments for these weapons is a lot of times they will say things that are not true in the weapon stats. Like one may say it increases your range, but what it really does is simply increases how far you can see, therefore you can attack people at farther range. It does not actually increase the range of the weapon. Other things will say it increases the accuracy, but it increases your player accuracy by removing let's say flash from your screen so that you can stay on target easier but it does not actually increase the recoil pattern or aim assist or anything like that of the weapon so a lot of these things are almost useless a lot of them are just not nearly as good as something else and it's important not to get hung up on what the little bars at the bottom right of the screen that say weapon stats, accuracy, damage, and so on. Uh, those are not necessarily true. The uh, first attachment that's available to the Marksman Rifles is the sights or optics attachment. And of course the first optic that's available to you is the standard scope that comes with the Marksman Rifle for free. And I strongly suggest that you use this scope. The Marksman Rifles, to me, are more of a uh, sniper rifle type of weapon and so having a scope is very beneficial I care a lot about range I care a lot about being able to fight from a long distance and the scope is by far my favorite thing to use in this game and uh, the standard scope that comes with the Marksman rifles for all four of them is going to give you somewhere around a four times zoom which is the same as a thermal sight or a VMR sight and is going to decrease your recoil by 20 percent that is a huge decrease in recoil especially for these weapons they are not the highest recoil weapons in the game they might even be the lowest recoil weapons in the game but they are certainly not laser beams and they the, the increase in recoil is pretty substantial. Putting iron sights or something like that on them is a pretty big change in your accuracy. I strongly suggest you stick with the standard scope. When it comes to your choice between the red dot sights or the iron sights, I strongly, strongly suggest the red dot sight. The red dot sight beats the iron sights in everything. It gives you a more open window. To look through it gives you a much much more clear sight picture it's a lot easier to track your targets through a red dot sight than it is an iron sight the reason that iron sights are so popular in the assault rifle world is because they're free for assault rifles if you can use the iron sights on your weapon it is a huge boost to your class setup because that leaves you with two attachment slots still it's a big deal, it's a big advantage to be able to use the iron sights on your weapon. It's, I don't touch the Remington because I hate the iron sights. However, I love the iron sights on the SC-2010, so that's actually my favorite assault rifle. Kind of like the Honey Badger, the AK-12. But when it comes to marksman rifles, the iron sights cost you an attachment perk. It's That's a huge disadvantage. They, uh, they're all pretty clear. They're all very usable iron sights. However they're still not nearly as clear as the red dot sight so if you're trying to decide between those two between a a uh, up close and personal kind of optic the red dot sight's the way to go the iron sight is kind of a throwaway sight it in this in the weapon stats portion it tries to tell you that it has 
gives you more mobility than the red dot sight does, but that simply isn't true. There's no statistical evidence to back that up. So go with the red dot sight if you're looking to be an up close in your face kind of player. When it comes to the ACOG scope, I hate the ACOG scope. I can't, I can't even use it. I've tried to use it before and I really just can't stand it. The advantage of the ACOG sight is that it does not blur the screen around you. So when you zoom in with the ACOG scope, your entire screen zooms in and you can see everything that's going on on your entire television at a, uh, an increased zoom. Kind of like the VMR sight, except the VMR sight isn't available for the marksman rifles, only the ACOG is. The problem with the ACOG is it bounces around way too much for my liking. I think it's more of a visual thing, I don't think it affects the, the actual recoil of the weapon, but it's just annoying how much it moves, it kind of even gives me a headache. And the uh, actual window that you're aiming through is very very small it's probably the smallest in the game i can't stand it and the outer rim of the acog scope is very thick so while it does zoom in the entire screen it doesn't blur anything it also just does not give you a very clear sight picture the next optic on the list is the holographic sight and what makes this sight special is the fact that it has a little bar on the side of it when you ads it will tell you how far away people are and you can kind of judge if they're in two shot kill range or three shot kill range and so on but to me that's kind of useless when i ads i'm not looking at my sight i'm looking at the target and i fire until the target's dead i'm not going to to ads at somebody and then look at my sight and say oh that's three shot kill range better fire three shots instead of just two it's it's just kind of dumb i can't i don't understand that side maybe that's super useful to some people but to me personally it's kind of a useless thing and the problem is that it really 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 bulky sight it's a it's a very large sight that that bar blocks a significant portion of your screen and it's just very awkward in my opinion I just I don't like it if you're gonna use a sight like that you might as well stick with the red dot sight and not have you know, a large portion of your screen blocked by a very, in my opinion, pointless bar that tells you how far away people are. The next site on the list is the Thermal Hybrid site, and uh, there's several things that I really love about the Thermal site, and there's several, there's, well, there's one thing I really hate about the Thermal site, and because of that, I just can't use it. Um, the Thermal site removes, in my opinion, a very significant portion of the skill in sniping that if you want to be a really good sniper or a really good marksman then you need to be able to spot your target you need to be able to have the vision and awareness to see things that aren't supposed to be there or to see the slightest amount of movement and be able to spot your target on your own and that's part of the fun of being a marksman is beating people who think that they're really well hidden or or spotting someone from a long way away and the thermal site takes that away with a thermal site you just kind of find a large open area you ads you scan over it and if something is bright you shoot it and i don't know to me that's really annoying i don't like getting killed by the thermal site when i think that i'm really well positioned but then i just glow like a christmas tree on the other person's screen and he kills me like, you know, I might as well have just been right out in the open, which is very irritating to me. I'm trying to play with strategy, and he's killing me. And and uh, and the same thing goes the other way. I don't really want to be able to, you know, know for a fact if someone's in that shadow. I want to be able to, to figure it out on my own and, and react to it on my own. And I don't know. To me, the, the thermal site's just really annoying. It, However, if the thermal part was taken away, it'd probably be my favorite my favorite uh, optic because the integrated red dot sight or as the game calls it integrated holographic sight is very very good I like that sight a lot um, when I first started playing with the marksman rifles and when I was going for all my gold guns the thermal sight was what I used the most but I actually saw myself using the actual integrated reflex sight a whole lot more and I really really liked it a lot it, that's 
one of my favorite optics in the game right there. And if they had a scope in the game that was not thermal, but had that flip off to the side and use close range sight option, that would probably be my favorite thing. Another thing about thermal sight is it's very, very clear. You get a very good uh, crosshair, you get a very thin outer rim block around the crosshair. It's just a really nice looking sight aside from the thermal part. And one interesting thing about the zoom level, the zoom level, as far as I can tell, is the same zoom as the standard scopes that come with the marksman rifles. So if you're someone who's been saying, I, I really like the thermal sight, I'm just going to keep using it because I love the zoom level, well, go ahead and try out the standard scope because it's basically the same thing. And for all you sniper rifle buffs out there, the thermal scope is the same zoom level as the variable zoom scope in its lowest zoom setting. So if you're sitting there trying to quick scope and saying, I don't like the zoom level of the standard scope, so I use a thermal, give the variable zoom scope a try because it is the same zoom level if you are fully zoomed out with that scope. And the final sight available to all the marksman rifles except for the SVU is the tracker sight and again I don't like the tracker sight very much um, if you're gonna use a no zoom sight you might as well use the red dot sight it really is the best one available for them if you're going to use a target finder sty style sight use the thermal sight because you get better zoom and the people show up more clearly on your screen the tracker sight also blurs the screen around the site so you're not getting any kind of benefit of extra awareness over the thermal sight so to me having my enemies glow yellow or orange or whatever it is I'm slightly colorblind isn't really that big of a deal and it's just I don't like the crosshair that it gives you it's a very odd looking sight I find myself missing quite a bit with it and I just I don't know I don't like it it's not for me if you like it more power to you but I strongly suggest avoiding the tracker sight uh, I'm sure everybody knows that it flips down into iron sights, but again, the iron sights just aren't that great. They're pretty good, but whatever. It's not as good as a red dot sight, no matter how you cut it. The next set of attachments are the barrel attachments, and they start out with the uh, flash suppressor, and the flash suppressor is pretty much useless on a Marksman rifle. Your flash is never going to get in your way on a Marksman rifle. The fire rates are too slow for the flash to really be constant enough to really affect your sight picture, not to mention the fact that most of your optics are going to be elevated high enough above the barrel that unless you're using the iron sights, which I've already told you not to do, you're not going to have any kind of issue with your flash. The silencer attachment is one that you either love or you hate. Personally, I love it. I really like being a stealthy kind of player. I'm not a big fan of people knowing where I am. And, uh, you know, I kind of view these as marksman rifle, or sorry, I kind of view the marksman rifles as sniper rifles. I play them like sniper rifles. And the reason I like the marksman rifles partially is because they can use a silencer without much of a without much of an impact. If you put a silencer on a sniper rifle, it's pretty much useless except for the VKS, but with a Marston rifle, it's not really that much of an impact. It does reduce your recoil by, or sorry, recoil. It does reduce your range by 25%, which on the IA-2 would equate to uh, 9.5 meters shorter two-shot kill range, which is kind of a big deal, but it you know, unless you're playing on a professional level where every bullet matters and every split second is something to worry about, I think you're going to find that the loss of range is not nearly as impactful as the gain of stealth. And when it comes to the muzzle brake, what the muzzle brake does is it increases your range by 20%, which on the IA-2 equates to 7.6 meters, which is not meaningless. But it's certainly not really that effective either. Um, I'm not a big supporter of the muzzle brake. I would rather have the silencer and just sacrifice a little bit of range. And finally we have the ammo attachments. And 
I am a big supporter of the extended mags. I like extended mags quite a bit. I don't personally use extended mags, but the only reason I don't use extended mags right now is because I don't want to make it harder to get the 2020 patch, which requires you to fire a higher magazine without missing a bullet. I'm not actively trying to get it. I'm not doing any of the, you know, cheap tactics to get it, like letting somebody take your juggernaut then hitting them with a stun grenade, something like that. But I also don't want to reduce the chances of me getting it just through generic gameplay by adding an extra half magazine to every magazine I have. I think it's perfectly fine to use it. It's perfectly fine not to use this personal preference kind of thing. Armor piercing rounds is what I actually use on my classes. Every class I have is armor piercing rounds. And part of that is just because I'm in the, I'm a muscle memory kind of guy. I like to, uh, ADS and pull the trigger for a certain length of time. When my finger tells me I've pulled the trigger enough for someone to be dead, I tend to stop pulling the trigger. And if that person's not dead yet, I'm kind of screwed. And so I don't care for that so much. It's just why I like armor-piercing rounds. If one of my bullets travels through a, uh, a handrail or I'm hitting a ballistic vest or something like that, it's going to mess up my time to kill. And a lot of times I'll end up stop not firing before the person is dead because I think they should be dead because I fired enough rounds for them to be dead. But one of those rounds went through, you know, a thin piece of wire somewhere along the line and didn't do enough damage and so that person's just gonna look at me like I'm an idiot and kill me. So armor piercing rounds has saved my life quite a few times since I've started playing this game. And the final available attachment for the Marksman Rifles is Burst Fire and guys do not ever use Burst Fire. Burst Fire is by far the worst attachment you can put on a Marksman Rifle. The thing about burst fire is that it actually does affect your range and your damage. And if you don't know, the game operates in certain tiers. A fully automatic weapon will have the lowest range and the lowest damage available for that weapon. If you take fully auto and make it into burst fire, what you're going to be getting is higher range and higher damage than full auto with a three round burst and then you take burst fire and make it semi-automatic you're going to be getting more range and more damage than burst fire in semi-automatic form the thing is that each of the marksman rifles come standard semi-automatic so when you put on burst fire what you're doing is you're reducing its range and its damage below what it naturally is and the problem is that it also increases your recoil quite a bit your fire rate goes up which means that there's less time for your weapon to recenter between each shot and so your recoil is going to go skyrocketing making it very difficult to land multiple shots on uh, distant targets and really not that easy to land multiple shots on nearby targets and so you're going to typically need two bursts to kill your opponent. And because of the burst delay, the length of time it takes you to fire four shots is actually going to be longer than the length of time it takes you to fire four shots with the same weapon on semi-automatic. And so if you need two bursts to kill somebody, your time to kill is going to be dropping dramatically despite the fact that your rate of fire technically is increasing. Thanks for listening and watching. I hope this commentary was helpful to you. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And don't miss my next video in which I'll be covering the perks involved in the Marksman Rifle class setup. And until my next video, have a good week.